Hey everyone, it's Mario and uh, just getting set up so we could get this started, our live Q&A. Just had a few moments. Uh, Sunday's my father and son Sunday, so I grab my uh, five-month-old and we go out. And today I'm at my parents' house, so just thought we'd jump on really quick and uh, go ahead and answer a few questions. So I've got my laptop set up too, so just give me a second and I'll get to your questions. Cool. Hey, Tony. All right, so first question I see is from Shandri Suleiman, and they're asking or stating, I'm interested to know about Amazon brand registry and trademarks. So a lot of uh, Amazon sellers will get trademarks with a USPTO, and the reason is because Number one, it protects a brand. Number two, it helps them get into Amazon brand registry. And with Amazon brand registry, um, it essentially allows you to have better control over your Amazon product title, essentially your listing. So product title, bullet points, product description, the images and everything. So why is that important? Once you guys start selling a lot, uh, you guys might get people whether it's competitors or um, anyone else trying to come in and change your bullet points, your title, even the brand name um, and images to kind of uh, either mess with your listing to make sure that your rankings plummet or because, for example, we had an incident a few days ago where one of our uh, clients who's brand registered, let me just move this, who is brand registered, um, they were out of stock on one of their best-selling items and they had a competitor kind of go in, change the brand name of the title and change it to their title and start selling their items. Uh, they, were doing, uh, they were doing FBA, they were doing Merchant Fulfilled. So what we had uh, our client do is they sent a um, email or filed a complaint via brand registry and within, I wanna say 12 hours, Amazon changed it back and they also filed a trademark complaint on the other sellers so they were also kicked out so very powerful but in addition to that um, in addition to that what happens is amazon gives you access to a whole bunch of uh, kind of additional features uh, you could do uh, like keyword searches on there and this is data that's coming straight from amazon it's not from third-party software where you don't really know how they came up with those uh, keywords or the volume Let me make sure that the lighting is okay all right so there's that, uh, you could do Amazon Live for your products. So imagine if I'm selling, I don't know, AirPods, right? This is my product. You could go live on Amazon and kind of show off your product, show off how it works, uh, kind of uh, show off any additional features your product has and how it's uh, better than your competitor's products and all that. So that's something else, uh, what else? They, they just keep on adding uh, additional features. Um, we should have, uh, an article on our website that kind of outlines all the additional features that you get so but definitely worth it um, and believe me it's worth whatever you pay for your trademark it'll, it'll come back tenfold at least so a few questions let me just get to that so Shanri, I don't know if I really answer your questions but that's uh, essentially the trademark and um, and brand registry let me just find this so I could see your questions Does your trademark have to be fully approved before being able to apply for Amazon brand registry? That's from Rhett Taylor. Uh, yeah, uh, it's got to be um, completely registered with the USPTO. On average, the trademark process here with the USPTO takes about six months, so I want to say nine months, depending on how, uh, um, how complicated the process is with respect to your trademark. If you receive any office actions, any sort of rejections from there and all of that. So... It can take some time, but it definitely does have to be fully registered because they're gonna ask for your registration number. And essentially, uh, if you guys haven't done it before, what happens is, for example, if we're the ones that file your trademark, we'll be the attorney of record. And let's say uh, we have our brand called Taylor, right? And that's our brand name. So once that trademark is registered and we go to Amazon and we say, we wanna go ahead and register the brand name Taylor, uh, they'll go ahead and send an email with a verification code to my email address or whoever your attorney on record is and 
we'll go ahead and provide that access code to you or that code to you, and then you'll kind of confirm, with, with, uh, confirm it with Amazon. So that's essentially how it works, but you definitely have to be uh, brand, reg sorry, your trademark has to be registered, fully registered, in order for you to get into Amazon brand registry. Uh, Tony asks, hey Tony, how you doing? How long does it take to get a design patent and utility patent and what are the approximate costs? So I'm not a patent attorney. We've got someone else that we work very closely with, Diana, and uh, she takes care of all designs. Um, sorry, all the patent stuff. Uh, utility patents are gonna be a lot more expensive and keep in mind, with patents, these are inventions, right? So with utility patents, it's gonna cost you around $15,000 and I know it takes a year if not more. With design patents, uh, we're actually trying to work with her to kind of give us like a bulk discount for all of our clients, but uh, it'll be a lot cheaper. Uh, what we're going for is $5,000 or lower for design patents. And the beauty of the design patent will be is you've essentially got a very powerful tool in your hand where even if you're not using that design patent for your products, you could essentially be the patent troll and go after other people um, obviously it's not recommended um, unless they are infringing on your product but you could go after other people and kind of um, collect licensing fees or sue them so definitely powerful tools um, utility so utility patents Tony let me just get back to your questions utility patents around fifteen thousand dollars and takes over a year with uh, design patents um, again around five grand if not lower it's a lot cheaper just depends on how complicated the design is too. So if just, if it's something basic like kitchenware, where if it's a spoon or wooden spoon design, something like that, it should cost you five grand or less. And the time frame, I wanna say it's about a year, maybe a little bit less than a year. Okay. All right, so we've got a few people watching. Um, yeah, so that's trademarks. Uh, just something else I want to talk about with uh, with trademarks. So a few of your colleagues from uh, from FBA Ninja from Kevin's course have come to us and say, I want to sell a wide variety of things. For example, I want to sell kitchenware. I want to sell toys. I want to sell like bed stuff related to the bedroom or furniture, things like that. And if we do that through um, the regular trademark process, you would have to pay around 275 per category of goods. So that could definitely add up. And when we're doing the research, whether it's us doing the research to kind of clear that your brand name and make sure no one else is using it and you're not gonna have any conflicts or if it's anyone else doing it, it becomes a lot more difficult to do and a lot more time consuming. So one thing that we've kind of uh, recommended, and again, this isn't a good fit for everyone, but one thing we've recommended is um, kind of going ahead and trademarking a website. So essentially we would put it in IC35, International Class 35, and do it as a website. So essentially we would protect your website and we would say your website goes, uh, um, your website sells kitchenware, home good, toys, furniture and everything else, right? And it's a lot easier to make that as broad as possible, right? Uh, to kind of expand the coverage on that. And you would only be paying one IC fee, so one 275 fee to the government. The drawbacks to that, you're not trademarking your brand name, you're trademarking the website. So essentially you're protecting your website. So a few things you could go from there. If you guys are barely starting out, you guys could go ahead and um, trademark the website. Again, if you guys are planning on going into a wide variety of items, right? You guys can go ahead and protect the website and have all the things in there. And then from there, if you see that, you know what? Toys are really picking up. You could essentially go ahead and rebrand the toy, whether it's you wanna use that same brand name or a different name and kind of just branch it out. So that's one strategy with that, with the IC35 strategy, we call it dynamic brand chamber because it could always essentially grow and very easily and very inexpensively. Uh, one thing with that, you would have to have your own website, which I know a lot of you uh, Amazon sellers kind of uh, don't, especially when you're starting out, but definitely a good idea to kind of have your own website and it would be required for that strategy, for the dynamic brand chamber strategy. And um, that's one thing, again, it does have its disadvantages, but um, for the right person, for the right, uh, 
kind of situation, it might make sense. Um, let me see. Does your trademark have to be fully approved? No, we answer that. When something is patent pending, would one be protected or no protection until filed and time frame for just patent pending? So, uh, Jaime, hey, how you doing, Jaime? Um, so with patent pending, it just means that it's pending. It's not registered yet. It's, it hasn't been approved by the government. Uh, I'm not gonna get into your other questions because that would be questions from patent attorney and I don't want any malpractice suits coming my way. But Jaime, if you're interested, uh, shoot me an email and I'll get you in touch with our patent attorney and she could uh, answer all of those questions for you. So if I trademark my website, can I still use my... Yes, uh, Chemeka Thomas, that's actually a really good question. So inside the trademark world, inside trademarks, there's two different uh, kind of uh, broad categories. One is for goods and the other one is for services. So when we do the website, that's considered more of a trademark for service instead of goods. And that's what I mean by it doesn't really protect your brand, it protects the website, which is essentially like a service. Right now, Amazon is accepting it. Amazon um, is very elementary when it comes to kind of uh, how they handle your trademarks and uh, the registrations. Right now, they accept uh, trademark registrations for services and it would in the eyes of Amazon it's just as good as if we were registering your brand so they still accept um, uh, service trademarks so the what I mentioned with the IC35 strategy uh, the dynamic brand chamber they are accepting that um, I haven't heard anything from them as far as if they are gonna stop um, I think with Amazon, what they do is, um, as far as like historically looking back at how they change their procedures and processes, if we look at before, I don't know if you guys were selling before, but with Brand Registry 1.0, all you needed was a website. And then what they did is they gave a lot of notice, um, several months notice and said, you know what, uh, Brand Registry 2.0 is coming out and now we're gonna be requiring a uh, registered trademark. So they give you guys enough notice. If they're gonna be making any changes to the brand registry process where they say, you know what, we're no longer gonna be accepting service uh, tr uh, service marks, I would definitely assume uh, pretty confident that they would give us a lot of notice. But um, right now they are accepting the IC35s and any other service, uh, service mark. Uh, Tony, another question. This may have been asked already, but what's the quickest someone can get a trademark and the total cost, including your costs? Uh, the quickest way, honestly, is to buy a trademark. That's going to be the quickest way, I want to say a month to two months. And of course, if it's the quickest, it's also going to be the most expensive. Uh, we found trademarks for a few of our clients who, uh, for some reason, they're in supplements and they launch a lot of new brands. So what they've been doing is just essentially instead of waiting for the six to nine months or sometimes maybe longer for them to get brand registered or have the registered trademark in order to get brand registered, they'll just go ahead and buy it out. Um, on average, I wanna say you're gonna spend around 5K, five to 6K on purchasing the trademark. And then uh, your attorney fees, I wanna say about a thousand. So all in all, it costs you from six to 7K. That's on the lower end, on the higher end, um, sky's the limit. Yeah, I've seen some very expensive trademarks, but that'll be the quickest way, but it's also going to be the most expensive way. Um, someone from the group had messaged me now. I was, um, I was talking to him on Facebook Messenger about kind of expediting trademarks. You can expedite trademarks on, under certain circumstances, and one of those is if someone is infringing on your brand. So again, if we go back to... Uh, um, Tony, I'll, I'll get to that. So um, under certain circumstances, we can expedite the trademark process and it'll save you guys about a month or two. That can only be done in a couple of circumstances. One of them is if someone is infringing on your trademark. So if we've got a, um, a brand name that's called Taylor, right? I know I keep on using your last name as a brand name, but it's, it's stuck now. So if we've got a brand name uh, uh, called Taylor and we've either got a hijacker 
or someone else um, online is infringing on our mark, whether it's online or offline, doesn't really matter. We could go ahead and kind of ask the government and prepare argument and say, look, we need this trademark application expedited because we do have someone who is infringing on our mark or potentially will infringe on our mark. And um, the government charges $100, I believe, is the fee for, uh, for um, it's, uh, the form is called a petition, what was it, petition for, uh, essentially you petition it. It's about $100 and uh, attorney fees will probably be around $500 because we've got to put arguments together and all that. So that'll save you about a month or two. Uh, I already have a brand name, that's what I mean. Yeah, Tony, so if you've got a brand name and um, someone is infringing on it, that'd be the fastest way to do it. And when I say infringe, even if it's a hijacker, that would be uh, considered uh, infringement. Uh, what the government likes to see in situations like that, at least in our experience, is they wanna see evidence that someone is infringing on your uh, brand name and you've shown some sort of effort to go ahead and, um, and contact them and notify them uh, that they are uh, infringing on your mark and that they should essentially cease and desist. I have a website as a collection and would like to sell different goods. Yeah, Chimika, so if you've got a website, then essentially we would just protect that website under that uh, strategy that I mentioned. And then if you see that one product is doing well or one brand is doing well or product uh, catalog is doing well, then we could just kind of break that off. Hey, Daniel, how you doing? How much is the trademark website? Is the process nine months as the name and logo? Yeah, so this um, trademark process is the same. It doesn't matter if you're doing a logo or if you're doing a brand name. What we usually recommend is that you guys get your word mark protected first, so the brand name, um, before you guys do the logo. And here's why. So if we've got a brand name for, um, for Taylor and we wanna go ahead and trademark that, uh, we would always protect the word Taylor first before we do the logo and because Taylor is a lot more important so once we get the Taylor then we'll be like okay let's go ahead and do the logo because if we don't if we can't get the brand name Taylor then the logo is almost irrelevant um, and also a word of advice for you guys filing um, your own trademark applications for logos don't claim color don't claim any color because just um, do it as black and white. Don't claim any color because, for example, if we've got a logo and it's red and blue, six months later we may decide to change that. So you have actually better protection if you go ahead and don't claim any color and just kind of do that logo by itself and just black and white, then you could use any color and still be protected. How much is the trademark website? Is a process so uh, yeah the process is the same and uh, with trademarks our so essentially our package what we do is 99% of our customers are Amazon and that's what we're focused on so what we'll do is essentially you guys could give us up to three brand names if you guys are just starting out and don't have it and we'll do a kind of clearance on all three of them and we'll provide you guys with a report it's about a 10 page report and essentially we look for any obstacles in the way of kind of registration if you're going to have any issues with any of those certain marks, we'll go ahead and mention it and we'll let you know what it is. And if uh, you can change it, we'll make some uh, suggestions and recommendations on how to make that better. So once we do that from those three uh, proposed names that you provide us, this is assuming that you guys don't have brand names yet, uh, you'll get the report back and we'll essentially have like a level of uh, risk for each one of those proposed marks. So one of them may be very high, obviously you would want to stay away from that, and the other two may be very low. So pick one of those uh, proposed marks, and then from there, um, obviously um, we'll kind of look into what you want to sell first, and then in six months, what other products you want to expand to. And then we'll go ahead and draft your, um, draft your goods description for the USPTO. That is very, very important, um, drafting the goods description, goods and services description. A lot of people who are doing it themselves just kind of write whatever, but um, there, there's a lot, a lot of uh, underlying facts behind it. For example, we had um, a client who came to us, I guess they had used one of the online services, I can't remember which one it was, and they were selling baby bathtubs. And on the goods description, they put it as foldable baby bathtubs. And I asked him, I said, why did you decide to write foldable baby bathtubs and not just write baby bathtubs? It's a lot more broad. 
Now, six months later or a year later, you may decide to add more products to your uh, to your brand. And again, it still might be bathtubs, baby bathtubs, but what if it's not foldable? Then you're essentially giving up that protection for it. So we kind of draft that and we try to make it as uh, as broad as legally possible with uh, goods uh, goods description. Again, a lot of people doing it themselves don't pay uh, enough attention to that. So once we draft that, we'll go ahead and uh, file it online with a USPTO. Uh, when we file it, if we get any non-substantive office actions, which is essentially like clerical letter errors that we've made or maybe you wrote down the wrong address and we need to change things like that or the wrong legal entity, we need to change anything like that, we'll go ahead and um, respond to the USPTO at no additional fee. And then once we do get your registered trademark, we'll go ahead and help you get into Amazon Brand Registry, kind of show you around. And then we'll also prepare three cease and desist letters. Uh, the way we drafted it is each one gets more aggressive. Uh, they're pretty scary. Uh, maybe one day I'll share it with one of you guys. Uh, it's kind of a three-phase uh, process on how to get rid of uh, get rid of the hijackers. So again, essentially, first we'll go ahead and do a search and clearance on three proposed marks. Or if you've already decided on one mark or one brand name, we'll go ahead and do the clearance on that. Prepare you a report with our legal opinion on any issues that may arise. From there, draft the goods and services description. Get it filed with a USPTO. Um, and then once it's registered, help you get into Amazon brand registry and then get you three cease and desist letters. So that's essentially everything that's included. Uh, depends on what kind of mark it is and what kind of application it is, whether it's a uh, intent to use or use in commerce and whether it's a logo or brand name, just a word mark, it'll range from a thousand dollars up to a thousand two, a thousand three. And if you guys want to expedite it, it's going to be a few hundred dollars more. So that's essentially how much it costs, how much we charge for it. Would you recommend getting a trademark if you just started out or would you wait a bit? Uh, Daniel, I always say get it right away. This is one of the things that you should do right away. These are like the foundations of your business. And uh, getting an LLC or corporation, uh, whatever legal entity you decide to go with, getting that set up and getting a trademark is essentially the foundation of your business. And I'll tell you why, uh, uh, I think I've mentioned this in another video, but we've got a client who's got a lot of products and they never did their trademark, they never registered it, they, they didn't even get a clearance for it, kind of have an attorney do a clearance to make sure no one else is using it. So now they're doing really well and they come to us and say, all right, we're ready to go ahead and file for our trademark. Well, we go ahead and search and right away, I mean, within a few hours, we're like, this is gonna have a lot of issues. So we didn't even wait to kind of send a letter to them. I just called them and I said, listen, I don't think you could get this. Like, it's gonna be almost impossible for us to get your brand registered because there's another uh, large brand who's using it. I said, essentially your options are either continue using it without a registered mark and wait the other party may come after you, they may not, or just completely rebrand. And if they rebrand, it's gonna cost them a few thousand dollars because now they gotta change their website around and kinda use a new brand name. They gotta change all their packaging, all their social media profiles, and essentially all that goodwill and influence that they, uh, that they gathered with their brand name is essentially lost. And it's like starting a new company uh, with all the products there, but no one recognizes what the product is. So I definitely recommend getting a, getting a trademark first or have it be one of the first things you guys do. I'm just getting a sip of coffee. Okay. Anything else? So we covered trademarks, we briefly talked about design patents and utility patents, the cost of those. Uh, copyright, again, uh, copyright is another thing that you guys uh, need to definitely consider. Very cheap to do copyrights, very cheap. And actually we're thinking about maybe doing a package where we do a trademark and also copyright any ebooks you have, copyright all the photos you guys have, like the professional photos that you guys get taken of your products, copyright all of that. and. 
I look at all of IP as an investment. Um, essentially, when you guys turn around to sell, you guys will get a lot better valuation on your business because you guys have trademarks and copyrights. So definitely look into copyrights too. Very inexpensive to do. Um, essentially, you guys could get maybe essentially any amount of photos you guys have protected for less than a thousand dollars so take a look at copyrights and also with ebooks if you guys have ebooks that you guys uh, created and um, and authored go ahead at protecting that that's another way of keeping hijackers away because um, uh, if, if they do jump on your listing and are now selling a similar product or same product they're not going to be able to give that ebook away because now they're going to be infringing on your copyright so definitely look into that we've got 13 people watching any questions from you 13 who do we have let's see is there a way to check who's watching no I don't want that I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I apologize if I'm not. But uh, any other questions from you? Hopefully I answered your questions. Elmer, hey, how you doing, Elmer? Daniel, any other questions? And did I answer your questions? Let me see. There's other comments. Let me make sure I answered all of them. It says 12 comments, but I can only see the last four. I wonder why that is. Okay. Um, this isn't in the questions, but someone else I know in the group uh, was discussing kind of getting a trademark even before you have an LLC um, or corporation. So what you guys would do is essentially assign it, and this is very very uh, easy to do with assigning a trademark from one entity whether it's an individual from a corporation or from a corporation to uh, LLC or corporation the fee for that is going to be $40 this is the government fee to kind of transfer it and or assign it I should say and then uh, you guys would also want to get a certificate so have the USPTO reissue the certificate and that's going to be about a hundred bucks that's not including any attorney fees those are just uh, kind of government fees but it's definitely possible so if you guys uh, don't have an LC yet or a corporation but you guys want to go ahead and get a trademark you guys could do it and Amazon does not have any issue with that are you the one we reach out to when we want to get started with the trademark uh, yeah Rhett so what you would do is uh, you could go to our website it's uh, esqgo.com so that's esco.com and just uh, there's a contact form out there just go ahead and uh, fill that out and one of my assistants will get a hold of you and kind of uh, help you out through the process so Tony says a product I'm getting into has a utility patent but I have had it reviewed by a patent lawyer and they say the design I have doesn't infringe the patent as the main aspect of which has been patented by has been patented my product has changed now is there any way to protect myself from fake claims from the patent holder when my product goes live let me just give me a second So Tony, with utility patent, uh, those are pretty complicated. Uh, but if your attorney said that you wouldn't be infringing, then um, I mean, I don't know what the product is and uh, what the patent is, and I'm not a patent attorney. But with utility patents, honestly, if you guys are going into a product and it's got a utility patent on it, unless you're absolutely in love with it and there's no other way where you could find another product, I would say try to stay away. Um, one of the videos I'm going to be creating in the next week or two is how to find products where their patent is about to expire. And I think this is going to be uh, pretty interesting, especially for you guys starting out and looking for products. So essentially you guys could be would be able to find a, patent, a product that's uh, got a patent on it and is about to expire 
and then you guys could kind of cross-reference that with whatever um, software you guys use, whether it's Viral Launch or Helium 10 to see how well it's selling. And essentially you guys could go ahead and create, I hate to call it a knockoff, but uh, companies do this all the time, kind of a replica of it and you guys could change it a little bit obviously, kind of make it your own. But that's a video I'm going to be working on in the next uh, week or two on how to find products with a pen where the pen is about to expire. But um, where's uh, I forgot who it was, but they were asking about the pen, utility pen, and their pen attorney said um, you're okay. I would just be very careful because even and so let me just take a step back. Patent attorneys just look at it in the real world as far as how patent law works, but in the Amazon world, it's kind of different. Amazon's laws and their procedures don't really mirror how the real world works. What I mean by that is they're able to, so if that other person, if that other party has a patent on a product, then yours, according to your patent attorney, is completely different and they'll have no valid claims. That other party, if they're a competitor of yours on Amazon, they may still go ahead and file a patent claim on it and now the burden is placed on you to kind of fight it and say, no, it's not different. So my, again, I'm not familiar with the patent or the product that you were talking about, but usually my suggestion is stay away from products like that. It's just a headache. Uh, will there be a replay of this video? Yeah, Daniel, uh, it'll be live here. So. I don't, hopefully no one deletes it, but it'll be here. Uh, Elmer says, is it possible to sell my Amazon business, meaning my account with the listings and or trademark? Yeah, Elmer, um, so I've sold two businesses, two PL businesses. One was on Empire Flippers, and um, I really like their, their service and their process, but you can sell, don't listen to whatever anyone says on uh, on Amazon that you can't sell your Amazon business. You absolutely can. I've done it twice, so believe me, and there's thousands of people selling it on Empire Flippers and all these other websites. It is possible and Amazon has no issue with it. So don't worry about that. But you are able to sell your account, meaning your seller central account, your selling account, along with your listings, your product, your inventory, and even your trademark. Like I mentioned before, your trademark, you would just go ahead and sign it. And anyone with a trademark, what I've been telling all my clients is if you've got a trademark and you're looking to sell your business, for example, the way they usually value Amazon PL businesses is from 30 to all, I've seen it all the way to 46. That's a multiple, so a multiple of 30 up to 46. Um, the way that works is whatever your net income is monthly, you would multiply by 30. So if, you're, if your profit monthly is 10,000, then you could sell it from a range from 30,000 all the way, sorry, 300,000 all the way up to 460,000. And uh, Empire Flippers has people uh, lined up where they're looking to buy similar businesses. So when you guys uh, sell it with them, they'll essentially initially take you through like a vetting process, make sure you're legit, your products are there, you're doing well, you're having no issues with uh, Amazon, and then they'll go ahead and list it. When they list it, they go ahead and kind of uh, reach out to their um, regular buyers first because there's people who buy portfolios of, uh, of Amazon accounts. They'll go reach out to them and then kind of get the process started. Uh, the one account that I sold with them kind of took, I want to say close to four to six months, just the sales process of it, the selling process, because I had an account here in the US. Um, I was in Walmart, I had my Shopify store. We were in the UK, uh, Italy, France, Germany, and Spain. We were all of, um, in Europe. Europe has uh, five United um, kind of accounts through Amazon. So it was a lot more difficult. And then with the UK, it was just a pain in the behind because we had to remove all the inventory and um, kind of have it go to another 3PL warehouse in close to London. And then they had to re-sticker it and then send it in. Uh, the European accounts, for some reason, they didn't let us switch over like ownership, so it didn't go from my account to the new buyer's account. Uh, we had they had to create a new account and then kind of have the inventory removed and then sent back into uh, Amazon under the under the buyer's account. So it just took a long time, but with the U.S., it's a lot easier. So Elmer, yeah, absolutely, you could definitely sell it. Oh, so what I was going to, uh, what I was uh, 
gonna say is anyone who's got a trademark and is looking to sell their business, what I've been telling my clients is uh, we've got a PhD economist who goes ahead and values trademarks. Uh, he does this for larger corporations, larger brands when they're in litigation. And I asked him, I said, how much is a trademark worth? For example, if I just created for a client and they've never used it, they're just starting out, let's say maybe they've got one product. He said with trademarks like that, initially he laughed because he's not used to that. He was talking about uh, a couple million dollar ad spend on brands a year. And I was like, no, no, no. I was like, these are smaller sellers and these are brand new trademarks. I said, how would you value that? He said, what I would do is uh, take uh, the money that you guys spent on trademarks. So that includes the government fee, any attorney fees, and kind of look at how much time and uh, energy or I guess just time you spent on kind of thinking of this brand name how much of your brain work or brain time went into it and then any advertising that you did he said I would take that total amount and then multiply it by 25 so I was like initially I was kind of taken back I said would you be willing to kind of sign something that says that he said yeah absolutely he had no issue with that where us in the Amazon world I don't think we value trademarks enough, but again, go into the real world and talk into a PhD economist who does this for a living and uh, values trademarks for these larger brands. He said it's a multiple of 25 and he's willing to go ahead and uh, kind of s write a report on it on how he came up with that valuation and kind of sign his name to it, essentially putting up his uh, reputation on the line. So uh, if anyone is looking to sell their business and they have a trademark, I would say let's go through this guy have, or anyone else you guys can find, have an economist go ahead and value it and then show that to the seller and try to get some of that money out of it too, you know? So can you set up a trademark if you're operating as a sole trader? Daniel, yeah, absolutely. You could have a trademark that where you own the trademark and then once you do have an LLC or corporation, you could very easily go ahead and assign it. So that's absolutely possible. All right, okay. Anything else? We've been on for, how long have we been going? For about 40 minutes now. So if you guys don't have any other questions, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I think we went over several few, several uh, good points. All right. Um, Daniel, I don't know if I answered your question, but yeah, this will definitely be live. Is forming an LLC or corp the only way to open business accounts? Um, what do you mean business accounts, Elmer? You mean like a checking account at the bank? Because you could just do that with a DBA too. Elmer, let me know uh, if you're talking about uh, just like a checking account at a bank. And if anyone else has any questions, go ahead and post it. Otherwise, I'm going to be wrapping this up in the next few minutes. Credit cards or checking account. Yeah, Elmer, you could go ahead and get a checking account with just a DBA. Um, I know you're in LA, so it's called a DBA or, or a fictitious business name. You could just Google it and find it. It's about a hundred bucks, hundred twenty dollars to go ahead and set that up. But you could just do it with a DBA, and then you you um, you'll uh, file that DBA, and then I want to say it takes about two three weeks for you to get the stamped uh, stamped uh, copy back from uh, from the government from the city. I think it's county actually, so from LA County, and then you would just take that to the bank, and you could just open up a DBA. So. You don't need to have a LLC or corp. Now what an LLC and corp provide where a DBA doesn't is limited liability. So now the idea is that people can't access your business. Sorry, let me put this the other way. If people come after your business, they can't access your personal assets. So that's what an LLC and corp provide where with the DBA it doesn't. DBA just means that, for example, Elmer is doing business as the company name, whatever that may be. So yeah, look into uh, look into DBAs. You can just Google and you'll find it. All right, anything else? All right, and if 
Okay, if you guys don't have anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Also, we've got a YouTube uh, YouTube channel. Uh, it's called Esco. Just started it out. We put a lot of videos there. We try to do it once a week, and I might put this video up there too. Uh, we'll cover various topics all related to Amazon sellers. So if you guys have any suggestions on what to uh, discuss, go ahead and message me or email me or PM or just post it here. We'll go ahead and uh, kind of discuss it. And if you guys haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you guys go ahead and uh, subscribe to our channel. We're trying to get that built up. All right, and that's Esco. You guys can just Google it or on YouTube, just search for it, it'll, it'll come up. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wrap this up. Elmer, hopefully I answered your question. If not, just shoot me a PM and I'll help you out. It's a very easy, to f easy form to fill out and very inexpensive, okay? All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. If there's anything else, go ahead and put it in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Thank you, guys.